This is a little project I was working on over the holidays. This is a uh, MIDI controller based on the Raspberry Pi Pico. You can also use a Pico 2 or uh, the wireless versions of those controllers. I call this the Twisty 2. This is the Twisty 1. I, I did a video on this one a couple years ago. This one uses pots. It has a couple of LEDs and stuff. It, it worked pretty well, um, but uh, I didn't really like the pots much. So I decided to build one with encoders. It was much more like the MIDI Fighter Twister. So this is, uh, again, it's inspired by the MIDI Fighter Twister. I like this form factor with the, this is actually quite a bit smaller than a Twister and lighter as well. So it has uh, 16 encoders and then we have a uh, an OLED display here and two encoders for controlling menus. So to compare this to the MIDI Fighter Twister, um, it's it's got most of the features of the Twister and it has some features that the Twister doesn't. Uh, the main features that it has that the uh, Twister doesn't is well, it has the USB MIDI, which the Twister does, but it also has TRS MIDI out. And if you use a wireless version of the Pico, it can have uh, Bluetooth MIDI, BLE MIDI as well. And I've tested the BLE MIDI with the iPad and uh, the PC, and it works great with both. Now let's take a quick look at the, the hardware here before we plug the thing in. So I designed this PCB. Um, as you can see here we got the Pico, this is a Pico W on this one. The TRS MIDI thing and there's a bit of circuitry here for the TRS um, MIDI out. We have these little RGB LEDs and we have three uh, 16 input analog muxes which are muxing the, uh, the encoders. So there's really not much to the hardware. You can see all the encoders in there. Can't really pull this faceplate off because of the knobs, but um, you see the 3D printed uh, bottom case. So the idea is you screw this board into the bottom case and then you put this top piece on and then you just put the nuts on to, to hold the, uh, the top in place. So you can see here, if you look inside, there's a little, uh, collimator tube over top of the RGB LED and then inside that little tube I glued some clear filament which makes a light pipe. So so that's kind of a quick, quick overview of the hardware. Um, again this is an open source project. Uh, the, the PCB files and the source code for the an application and the um, SDL files for the enclosure are all up on my GitHub. So let's plug the thing in, see how it works. It's plugged into my PC at the moment. So again, we have the 16 encoders and the two menu encoders and the OLED display. So you notice as I turn this encoder, hopefully you can see this on the video, but the, the LED gets brighter when you turn the encoder up. So it's, it's intended to give you, give you some idea what the, the value is you have set. And uh, can we get the color LEDs for each uh, control? We can customize all that stuff. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, yeah, so that's one of the major differences between this and the MIDI Fighter Twister. Th this thing is a completely standalone device. So you can configure it completely. You can set the MIDI messages and colors and all that stuff. Um, set it up on the device using these, this little menu thing with the encoder uh, and the, uh, the display. And then you can save up to 16 setups and recall them later. So, again, you know, it's a major advantage, I think, is it doesn't require a third party or an extra piece of software to set the thing up. So, uh, if we press the button, we get uh, the, the buttons are always indicated in white. So, right now, they, these buttons are set up in toggle mode. So, you know, so I press it once, it turns on, press it again, it turns off. You can also set them up to be momentary, where they just activate when you press and they deactivate when you release. So we have uh, four pages of controls, and we select the page with this left encoder. So as we scroll through the pages, we get different colors, and again, these colors are customizable. And you note when I change the control, that the values change on the screen here. It's showing me I'm on page one, CC16, which is the default assignment for that particular control. I'm on MIDI channel 1, showing me in CC16 and the value is 73. So again, we can change all this setup in, in the menu. If I want to see what the switch states are, because when you 
when you turn the encoders, it sort of it defaults to displaying the, the last thing that you use. In this case, it was an encoder, so I've lost uh, the state of my switches. If I want to see what the switch states are, I double click, click this left encoder, and now it's showing me the switch states. Double click again, it, it goes back to showing me the encoder states. So to get into the configuration menu here, we, we single click this left. Oh, something happened to my computer. Um, we single click this thing and now we're into this little setup menu. And you see that the last encoder that I touched, actually, which was this one, is flashing, which indicates that's the one that we're going to edit the configuration for. So if we want to change to a different one, we just press the button on that one. Now we're editing that one. We can also scroll through them with, with the left encoder. And this is kind of handy when you're changing, like you're changing colors and stuff. You can just change it, flip to the next one, change it, flip to the next one, change it. So now let's change this top left encoder. So we have, uh, we can set the MIDI channel, we can set the CC number. We have labels on this thing. So um, a label is intended to be um, something a little more um, explanatory than just showing the CC number. So if I click using the right menu, a right encoder here to go through these menus. See it's highlighted so we can change it. So we go through and now we've got, uh, like there's a hundred different labels that I put in here. You can um, assign a label to that encoder. So let's say <coughs> it's controlling um, decay, for example. So now we've set that. We exit this menu by clicking on the left encoder. Now it's showing me it's, it's decay as opposed to just showing the CC number. If I go to this one, I haven't changed the label, so it's showing the CC number and the value. Now it's showing, it's showing decay. So we go back into the menu here. We can also set the, uh, the color. So we can change it to one of six different colors. We have blue, violet, uh, aqua, green, orange, and red. And again, we can do that for any of the controls we want. We have minimum value for the encoder, a maximum value for the encoder. If the minimum value is set higher than the maximum, uh, the encoder will actually work in reverse. If we turn clockwise, the value will actually go down. So the next page is for the switch. We have a switch MIDI channel, we have a switch mode. So again, the switch modes are toggle, which is the default. So when we, let's get to the menu here. So this is toggle mode. So when we press it, it changes. And if we go into, we can change that one to momentary. And now it's it's only active when I press it. So let's go back into the switch menu. What else we have? We have switch types. So we can have the switch send a CC message. We can have it send a PC message or a program control change message. We can have it send note messages or we can have something called set encoder. So uh, I think the first two are pretty self-explanatory, CC messages and PC messages. Note, you can basically set this thing up. So see, I have um, the setup as momentary. I have it set in note mode. When I press this button, it's gonna send a note on message. I'm still in the menu here, but, but if I press this, it will send note on, note off, note on, note off. So you can set this thing up to be a little MIDI keyboard if you want. You can see it's now showing that's in note mode. You can also give it a label if you want. So just to finish off the switch settings here, we have um, switch CC number. So it's in CC mode. This assigns the uh, the CC number for that switch. We have a switch label, so we can label switches just like we can with encoders. Uh, we have minimum and maximum values for switches as well. I'm just going to go back to the one mode here, which was a set encoder. And what this does, it um, the switch will set the encoder for that same control to a predefined value. So the value it's going to set it to is um, the maximum value for the switch. So if I can set this to, let's give it the value um, 50. I'll go back. So when I press this now, it's set the encoder value to 50. I can change the encoder value, press the switch again, it goes back to 50. 
So the idea here is if you've got a control, say, in your um, application or your VST or something, maybe it's an equalizer or something, and 50 is flat, and you're fiddling around with the equalizer, and say, well, I just want to get back to flat EQ, and you just press the button, uh, it goes back to that value. I borrowed that feature from the MIDI Fighter Twister. So now that we've done a configuration of uh, all the controls and labels and colors and stuff that we want, we can save them by pressing the right menu encoder. It gets us into this little menu here. It's a slot number, so which changes basically, um, you know, which of the 16 save slots we want to use. So the actions are load, save, and format. So you, can, if you, you can't actually reformat the flash file system in the Pico. Um, obviously that's going to wipe out all your save files, so you probably don't want to do that too often. Um, and then I'm going to save this one and just say confirm. So this is just a double check to make sure you actually do want to do something to the file system. So you have to basically change it to yes. And it said it saved it to slot 1. So if I, just to show that that actually worked, if I unplug the thing, now it's back, plug it back in, it's went back to, it'll go back to its default settings. So no label, go back to the load menu, say I want to load slot one, confirm, and now it's back to where it was. So now, now put the decay label on it. So. Yeah, so 16 slots to save your setups. So I think that's about it. Um, again, this thing is uh, it's open source. All the files are up on my GitHub. And I'm hoping that um, you know some people will build it and tell me what they think. Um, yeah, it was a fun little project. And uh, I think as, as, far as, as far as I'm concerned, it's more or less feature complete. If somebody wants something added, uh, make some comments and... Um, I guess and I'll see what I can do to add new features to it. But in terms of what I want to do, um, I think it's pretty good. Now, what I may do at some point is uh, there's enough room in this uh, case here to add a battery. Uh, so I might put a switch in a battery and it'll step up converter. So, which would be nice for the wireless uh, the BLE version of it with a, with a Pico W. And then I'll be able to use that with my iPad and it's just a nice little standalone box with no wires. So, I'm probably going to do that. So anyway, there it is. Have fun.